Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-63. The party was making good headway in exploring the ruined dungeon previously. Karina the Waif managed to save Bulger from a serious danger as part of the group discovered a giant constrictor snake that had found its way into the dungeon. More problems arose as a tremor, followed by a cave-in, damaged a portion of the hallway, separating Karina from the rest of the group. We look back in on the party as they struggle to clear a path to get to their troubled comrade. Running back to the cave-in site, Cave sloshed water out of a leaky bucket that he had filled in the cistern chamber. Everyone quickly took turns gulping down the water as they labored in the hot, dusty hallway. The past 30 minutes had seen constant extraction of rock from the debris-choked hallway. Vargas had found a large piece of timber and began to push it upwards like a large lever. His face turned beet red and both Sister Elaine and Cave Silvertongue ran in front of him to help hoist the timber up. A loud rumble sounded and the timber rose sharply as a large portion of stones collapsed into the other side. The leith Lady Irina leaped through the gap to the other side yelling, Karina! 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 But no response was given. As the others climbed over the rubble, Fargus, who was bringing up the rear, cautioned the party on the potential for another cave-in. As he fell through to the other side, he noticed multiple cuts and scrapes covering his hands. Halfway down the hall, the large ranger made out Sister Elaine who was carrying a torch and following behind the elven mage. The pair rounded a corner, quickly followed by Cave and Bulger. Fargus patted the dust off his leggings and began to sprint down the hall behind him. The group found themselves in a small room with freshly broken furniture. A strange grayish octopus-like creature lay in a pool of black ichor. The fluid appeared to be the creature's blood and a spent torch was next to the body. Bulger noticed a faint blood trail leading out of the room through an archway on the other side of the chamber. With drawn weapons, the group hurried around the corner and down a short hallway. Fargus plunged into the darkness and quickly fell flat on his face. Inside, a large square room. Party members following behind saw the stumble and noticed the cause. An unconscious and bleeding Karina was lying face down on the flagstone floor. The quartet quickly went to their needs and began to examine her for signs of life. Sister Elaine fumbled through her robes and grasped the wand of healing that they had gotten several weeks earlier. Waiting for word that the waif was alive, she pursed her lips and readied the magical item. Cade pointed out that he, she had a heartbeat and the others stepped out of the way as Fargus grabbed the torch and began to illuminate old torches in the room. Sister Elaine began to pray to Dilo and waved the wand. Blue light escaped the tip of the wand and shocked the waif's body back into life. Sitting bolt upright, Karina gasped loudly and began to touch herself to make sure it wasn't a dream. The wounds on her face and arms immediately healed and she slumped backwards only to be caught by Bolger. Speaking in hushed tones, the sailor told the young woman that she was okay and among the living. Fargus stood in the middle of the room of a raised diaz that was home to a sturdy wooden chair. A small catwalk encircled the chamber and led to the north through an opening. As the ranger examined the painted room, he caught movement out of the corner of his eye. We got company, he yelled, which caused others to react accordingly. Bulger carefully laid down Karina as she was still dazed from the healing magic and helped form a line next to the large fighter. With Fargus pointing to the threat, the others noticed a large insect-like creature scaling the high walls of the room. The bulbous creature looked down at the group and made some skittering noises before quickly running down the wall. Everyone gripped their weapons as the creature closed in on them. The group heard a whoosh as they readied their weapons as Lady Irena let loose a volley of flame bursts, striking the creature in the abdomen. 
The group closed in on the creature just as the antenna struck the bard on the arm, causing him to become catatonic and paralyzed. Fargus landed a blow, as did Sister Elaine. Bulger swung his weapon, but missed, and the creature attempted to hit him with a second antenna attack, but missed. Lady Irena smashed two more magical blasts into the creature, but was then bit by razor-sharp mandibles that pinned her arms to the side. Shrieking in pain, it caused the others to double their efforts to bring down their foe. The other members of the party began to hack and slash at the creature as the bard began to come around from his paralysis. The carrion crawler smashed its head into Fargus, knocking him into the wooden throne and attempted to flick the back half of the body at the sailor, who ducked and rolled underneath the creature. The mandibles tightened again on the pinned mage, causing her to howl in pain. Without her arms, she was unable to cast spells and watched helplessly as her party went down, one by one. The beast rose and appeared to be ready to smash the elf into the ground when its pincers opened and dropped the leith woman onto the floor. Blinking the dust out of her eyes, she noticed that the gnomish sailor was running towards her with its arms over his head. Weakly, she held up an arm to defend herself against the demi-human when Bulger stopped in his tracks. The bulbous creature teetered for a moment before falling over opposite of the large ranger. In the haze caused by her wounds, Irena noticed blood dripping off Bulger's weapon and arms and looked over to the creature. The round gnome had dipped under the creature, stabbed it, and dragged the blade the length of the creature, laying it on its side with its innards falling out. Cabe Silvertongue was still woozy from his encounter, as was Fargus who had a line of blood drizzling down his temple. The pair walked over and stabbed the creature a few more times, confirming its demise. Sister Elaine began to tend to the mage's wounds just as the waif began to snap out of the fog of pain. The young woman meekly thanked the party for saving her and asked if any of them had a drink. Bulger ran back to the cave-in and returned with a nearly empty bucket for a very grateful young woman. Fargus dabbed at his head and noted the blood, but did not find any other aggressors in the chamber. Returning to the downed mage and waif, he asked her what happened. She weakly smiled and stated he wouldn't believe her if she told him. Try me, was the response. Karina drank the last of the water and wiped away the rest from her lips before starting to tell her tale. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.